Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare and sometimes self-care. And today we are doing another episode of this or that. This is where I take two really similar skincare products and do a this or that battle. And today's episode is really all about moisturizers. Like tis the season. I've been putting on so much like thick, rich, creamy moisturizer to keep my skin happy in winter time. So I've got a battle between two Holy Trinity moisturizers, ceramide cholesterol, and fatty acids. Then we're gonna move over to gel moisturizers for my oily skin friends. And then finally, rounding it out with two super similar Pyongyang Yul moisturizers. If you're so ready, give the video a big thumbs up. Let's jump right in. Let's start off with the Iliun Ceramide Ado Concentrate Cream versus the Estera Ado Barrier 365 Cream. Now, both of these moisturizers feature ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids, which you know I call the holy trinity for moisture barrier strengthening and repair. So let's start off with the Estera 365 Cream first. So this features two different types of lab made ceramides, meaning that when you look on the ingredients list, you're not gonna see like ceramide NP or the word ceramide at all, but these are actually synthetic ceramides that uh, go under like really long names, but look for MEA at the ending of these ingredients. And these are the synthetic ceramides. They also go under the names PC102 ceramides and PC104. Now, really the only thing we need to know here is that there's really no difference between like ceramide NP and Ceramide PC 102. They are very, very similar and they both can heal and strengthen your skin. Other notable ingredients, we've got cholesterol, we've got a lot of different fatty acids in here, and we also do have a good variety of occlusive agents. Now, those are the ingredients that really help seal everything in, and that's really important for a good, hardworking, barrier supportive moisturizer. So it's great to see that in here. No fragrances, no essential oils, and no drying forms of alcohol. So this cream features what they're calling derma on soft capsules. So when you look at the texture of this, you're gonna notice all these little like white speckles or capsules. These are the ceramides. And really the idea here is that these little capsules kind of keep the ceramides really fresh and potent and effective for your skin. So when you start to like rub it into your skin, these capsules burst and that really effective, potent, fresh ceramide is delivered deeply into your epidermis. That's the theory anyways. Um, um, this is actually something, spoiler alert, that the Iliune cream also features, and it's something that I've always kind of said is probably a little bit more marketing, but either way, it doesn't really bother me whatsoever. Texture-wise, this is a really nice cream. It's got a good medium weight feel to it, um, and it's got some nice emolliency to it, but I definitely feel the occlusive agents at play here. It actually almost feels like a cream balm type of texture, if you know what I mean. Like, it just has a little bit of an ointment type of feel once you start to work it onto your skin. So it's emollient, it melts in, it does all the moisturization inside, meaning it's not really greasy or shiny or leaves a layer at the top of your skin. It's got really great absorbency. And then once it is absorbed into your skin, it feels medium weight on the skin, but you're gonna feel definitely that seal it in a type of quality. I still find it very breathable and comfortable, but definitely it is kind of sealing in and hugging in all your other skincare layers. So let's talk about the Iliune Cream next, which you know has been a long time favorite of mine. I've been using this cream since like 2019. I've gone through quite a few different reformulations with it. Like my love still is strong for this product. And it actually is extremely similar ingredient wise to Estera, which is why I wanted to do this comparison because this is another cream that is using lab made or synthetic ceramides. They are using one version here, which is the uh, PC104, which mimics a ceramide NP. We also have cholesterol and fatty acids and we do have uh, quite a few occlusive agents in here as well. Now, Iliune is also featuring the ceramide capsule technology as well, and it's really similar to Estera. You can see it in the texture as you work it into your skin. They just really melt down. You don't really feel anything rough or pulling on your skin at all. These aren't like beads, you know what I mean? They're not like little scrubby bits or anything. They are very melty, you really don't feel them. Now, let's talk about the texture because it does look very similar to Estera, and I would say that the weight 
weight on the skin is very similar. This is definitely like a medium type of cream, but when you get it onto your skin, you will notice that there's a lot more emolliency. There's a lot more moisture, a little bit more richness to this cream than Estera. There are quite a few oils in here at play. I think that's what's contributing to more of the richness or the buttery feel to this that um, when compared side by side, Estera just doesn't really have while still maintaining a medium feel. It's not as rich. So this or that and it's super duper hard for me to decide believe it or not because you know Ilian has been a favorite of mine forever and it has really crushed the competition time and time again but I'm really split between my um, opinion about these because I actually think they're both really excellent so let me tell you the differences here because as I mentioned Ilian did uh, go through a reformulation in recent years I do have a video that does the breakdown of what they updated with this formula so you can definitely check that out if you want to like dive in deep but like TLDR they changed it and it feels a lot more moisturizing and more emollient as I was mentioning more rich um, than the previous versions have and because of that I have felt that since I have started with the new formulation tube I don't reach for this quite as often where Iliun used to like fit it used to fit my lifestyle like all four seasons I'm actually more reaching for this like almost exclusively now in the colder uh, temperature temperatures where my combination skin goes really, really dry. So um, things have changed with my relationship with this cream. I still like it, but it's not as multi-purpose maybe for me um, or as useful for me outside of winter because the richness that they uh, infused into it is beautiful. It's perfect for winter, but maybe not perfect for me in spring. That's where Estera comes in because this actually reminds me a lot of the previous Iliune formulas that didn't have as much emolliency. I know so many of you were bothered by the reformulation with Iliun because that that bump up in richness was too much for your skin um, so maybe if you that sounds like you are you have that experience you love the old Iliun you don't like the new Iliun the this or that winner would be Estra this reminds me so much of old Iliun that medium weight that that nourishing inside of the skin but not going overboard with oils or overboard with emolliency or feeling too thick on the skin this really achieves that with maybe just a hint more more occlusivity um yeah maybe a little bit more occlusivity but really similar to like og Iliun. so this one is going to be the pick if you like medium creams that aren't too rich if you have drier skin needs or if your skin is really just having a tough time adapting to winter maybe there's a lot of wind really cold harsh temperatures Illy Yoon is going to be the winner for you because the emolliency in here really helps with dry skin. But if you're a little bit more on the combination side, Estra is going to be the one for you. Next up is my gel moisturizer battle for all my oily skin friends. This is the Purito Oat in Calming Gel Cream versus the Beauty of Jason Red Bean Water Gel. Now these are actually two fairly recent releases from both of these brands. So I'm excited to be bringing you like brand spanking new products. You may not have heard reviews on just yet, but these are definitely geared towards those people who maybe have a little bit more oil on their skin, or if you just like a really light gel moisturizer you don't like really heavy layers this is the this or that battle for you so let's start off with the purito oat gel cream so ingredients wise we do have oat seed water in here making up a good portion of the ingredients plus we also have great uh, hydrators like panthenol and glycerin and also beta glucan there's a little bit of squalane oil in here that's going to bring just a hint of moisture and maybe a touch of occlusivity but overall the ingredients list is relying heavily on humectant or hydrating ingredients. Now the name of this product really is kind of deceiving, I think, because it is calling itself a gel cream. And I have a very specific texture in my mind um, when I think about a gel cream. And when I first tried this texture out on my hand, I was like, hold up, where's the cream portion of the gel cream? This just looks like a straight traditional gel moisturizer. So that's really what I think it is. I think it's really just a nice, loose, watery gel texture. You feel all the humectants in there. It definitely does have a nice hydrating feel to it. It absorbs very quickly um, into the skin and it actually does not have a 
like a, a huge presence on the skin. It's a very thin layer that absorbs into your skin. And I would say even, you know, once the hydration element, you know, when you put something on first, you're like, ooh, it feels so good. It's infusing my skin with moisture. Once that's absorbed down, like after a minute or two, it's almost like you don't even feel that you put this on your skin at all. It is whisper light on the skin, which is that maybe you can, like if you really tune in, you can feel a little bit of the moisture from the squalene, but really this is incredibly light on the skin and a true traditional gel moisturizer texture. Let's talk about the beauty of Jason Red Bean Water Gel now because this is a new line for uh, Beauty of Jason, the Red Bean line, and it is really targeting uh, those with a little bit more oil or sebum production on their skin because the Red Bean, that star ingredient, is actually supposed to help with overproduction of oil on the skin. So it has a little bit of that sebum controlling property. So other ingredients in here of note include a lot of hydrating amino acids. We do also have panthenol, glycerin, and beta-glucan. Those are shared ingredients um, that Purito is also using. A big difference here is that they are using some peptides. Uh, we do have a couple of growth factor peptides, EGF, IGF-1, and FGF-2. Two. And then we also have uh, acetylhexapeptide 8, which you know I always say is the Botox peptide. This is a peptide that kind of helps to firm and lift the skin. Now this one really does live up to its name. It's called a water gel and it definitely looks and feels like a water gel. So this is a little bit thicker looking. It's got a bit more body to it than the Purita, which was a looser type of gel. This is a little bit stiffer in texture, but once you start to work it into your skin, whoa, hydration bomb. There are so much hydration that water gel element really comes into play you feel a lot of hydration there's just that little whisper of balancing moisture that really helps to just hug everything in so this or that and this is a tough one because as I mentioned these don't really suit my skin type at all um, so I'm really just going off of what I prefer in skincare so this or that the winner is Beauty of Jason Red Bean Water Gel. Now let me tell you why. You know, I think that this is definitely superior in its hydrating qualities. As I mentioned before, Purito is very light, thin, almost disappeared off of my skin. I did feel hydration on application, but I just don't feel like my skin held on to that hydration. Where Beauty of Jason, I definitely think there's more hydrating ingredients, more humectants at play in here. There's so many hydrating amino acids in here. And I think that that little whisper of moisture really helps to balance everything out and kind of help your skin hold on to hydration. It's not full blown like super duper occlusive, but just that little bit of balancing moisture just hugs everything in. Um, and that is really a, a key, especially if you do suffer with a little bit of hydration loss with dehydration, you do need a little bit of something. It doesn't have to be full blown like petrolatum or like Vaseline, but you do need a little bit of that hug it in quality. And Beauty of Jason delivers that while still maintaining a really airy, light feel on the skin. I think this is a wonderful gel cream moisturizer. You know, I do think that the formulation of Beauty of Jason is just more interesting. You know, if you're going to look at ingredients side by side, Purito is very minimal, um, where Beauty of Jason, it's not like a long ingredients by any means, but there's a little bit more at play, a little bit more, like I said, more humectants, more hydrating ingredients. But of course we have the peptides too, and that might be important for some people who are going down their well aging journey and are interested in adding like a growth factor peptides into their skincare routine. And I love acetylhexapeptide 8. It's not something that makes like huge meaningful differences, like long-term differences on your skin. It doesn't fight fine lines and wrinkles, but it gives you like an instant firm um, kind of feel to your skin and a lifted look to your skin that I absolutely love. Um, and so I just think that it's a little bit better maybe on the ingredient front. I do have to say, uh, I think the biggest reason why I chose Beauty of Jason as the winner is because I think that this just is gonna suit a wider variety of people. You know, if you like lighter gel moisturizers, if you have a little bit more oil on your skin, I do think that this is going to serve a lot more people than Purito. And that's mainly just due to the fact that Purito is just so, so thin. It's so, so light on the skin. The people who would like this are probably not even wearing moisturizers and they're absolutely fine with it. So this is just a narrow 
narrower uh, target audience for Purito, whereas I think that I feel really comfortable recommending Beauty of Jason to those who like gel moisturizers because I think this is probably just going to hit a sweet spot for you a, a lot better than Purito. Next, our Pyongyang Yul Moisturizer Battle. This is the Pyongyang Yul Edo Cream Blue Label versus the Pyongyang Yul Black Tea Enriched Cream. Now, longtime viewers of my channel may know that I've been a fan of the Blue Label Cream for a long time. Um, this is something that I used a few years ago. I've, I've been through a few tubes of it. It kind of fell out of my routine in the last year or two but this is something that I harbor deep love for and I really like this moisturizer. Now you may also know that I recently tried out the Pyongyang Yul Black Tea Enriched Cream and it's been a favorite of mine. I was fortunate enough to work with the brand um, for the Black Tea line and I absolutely love this. I actually just emptied it this morning um, and it was good down to the very last drop. Now when I was using this cream, I was thinking in my mind, oh yeah, remember the Blue Label Cream? These seem so similar to to me that I actually had to go out and purchase the blue label again because I wanted to do a this or that comparison. I thought they were really, really similar in my memory, but once I got them um, both together in the same time and space, I realized that there's actually quite a few differences here. So hopefully this, this or that will help you decide which one is right for you. So let's talk about the blue label cream because this is a line from Pyongyang Yul that is really focused on sensitive skin. Now, when you see the word Edo in Korean skincare, it actually is like like shorts for atopic dermatitis. And this is actually just like code for any product that is good for sensitive skin, skin that can get atopic dermatitis. So these are products that are going to be geared for sensitive skin. They might even say they're safe enough for babies. They're incredibly gentle formulations. And that's exactly what the Edo Cream Blue Label is all about. It's a very minimal cream um, without any fragrances, no essential oils, no drying alcohol, no excessive extracts. This is really just focused on moisturizing sensitive skin. Now let's talk about the black tea enriched cream because this is very different in who it's targeting. And Pyongyang Yul, you know, when Pyongyang Yul first sort of hit the scene years ago, they were definitely a very minimal medicinal type of brand, definitely in line with how the blue label cream looks, right? Very, very minimal, maybe even boring, right? Where the uh, black tea line is definitely their, their way of doing a luxury line. This is a little bit more upscale for them. They're focusing a little bit more on packaging and they're going deeper into their heritage as a medicinal brand because Pyongyang Yul is all about medicinal healing, um, Asian like traditional medicine. They use a lot of different extracts and they've always done it in a really restrained clinical way. But with black tea, they are able to really embrace that heritage, go kind of full out and give a little bit more of a premium experience. Now let's talk about the ingredients here because they do have have some shared like I think like foundational ingredients including ceramide and pea, a glycerin, shea butter, and macadamia seed oil. And these are all great um, for strengthening your barrier, um, helping with skin health, uh, giving good emolliency to the skin, maybe even a little bit occlusivity. So these are great foundational ingredients. But when you look at these side by side, you're going to notice that there's a huge difference here. And that really comes down to how they're marketing the lines, right? The blue cream is definitely way more minimal. There's less ingredients here where the black tea cream, there's a lot more here. There's more of that medicinal plant extract kind of vibe coming from this. Um, it definitely has a longer ingredients list. That being said though, both of these creams are free from fragrance, essential oil, and drying forms of alcohol. Now both creams do feature peptides. The blue label cream is featuring copper tripeptide one. And I think this is really true to its focus on sensitive skin and healing um, vulnerable skin because copper tripeptide one, one of my favorite peptides because you know it's really strong in its well aging game, stimulating collagen, helping to target fine lines and wrinkles. But what's so great about it is it actually has so many benefits for the skin and one of the other benefits that it provides is wound healing. It really helps to facilitate healing of inflamed, vulnerable, uh, maybe even open skin. It can even help to facilitate with scars and things like that. So so I understand why they're using this particular peptide because while there's definitely going to be some well aging benefits, it's going to help with, like I said, skin that's vulnerable, really, really inflamed that needs to be healed up and strengthened. Copper tripeptide is something that can do that. 
Now the black tea enriched cream features acetylhexapeptide 8, which I already told you is the Botox peptide and gives that really firm and lifted look to the skin. And that's really what this cream is all about. They're really targeting skin elasticity. Um, even in the plant extracts that they've used in the cream, they are focusing in on elasticity and tone with those particular plant extracts. There's also more ceramides in here, cholesterol, fatty acids, really focusing on strengthening the skin, which is actually a really vital part of the well aging journey. And there's actually a lot of centella in here too, which has some soothing properties to it, but also has its own well aging benefits. So you can see overall where the formula is really targeting more well aging with the black tea and rich cream. And the blue label is really more focused on healing sensitive and vulnerable skin. Let's compare the textures. Now the blue label cream is definitely a medium weight traditional type of cream. It um, feels really comforting on the skin. It's got a nourishment to it, but it's not overly emollient. I wouldn't necessarily call this a buttery or a rich cream, but it definitely does have that nourishing kind of comforting hug of moisture that just doesn't feel really overwhelming or greasy on the skin. Now the black tea enriched cream is definitely thicker. It's definitely more moisturizing, rich, buttery. These are words that I feel comfortable using about this cream. It definitely has a stiffer, thicker texture to it. You can see it right here. Um, and it feels very emollient as you work this into your skin. It's actually got really good absorbency for feeling so moisturizing because sometimes those thicker types of creams that have a lot of richness, I feel like they leave a layer on top of the skin. Like they just don't absorb down completely, but the absorption here is really, really beautiful. Um, it just kind of melts into your skin. It feels so good. Definitely on the, the thicker or the heavier side of medium, I'm not going to call this a full blown heavy cream, but we're inching towards that territory. And there's a good amount of occlusivity to this too. Um, maybe just due to the fact that it feels a little thicker on the skin, it really hugs everything in. I personally don't notice a lot of shininess or greasiness at the top of my skin when I use this, but my skin is very dry right now. It just drinks this cream up. If uh, you have more of a combination skin, you're not experiencing a lot of dryness, I do think that this could feel a little greasy at the top for you because it's not gonna quite suit your skin type. It'll be a little bit too rich, but if you're searching for more nourishment, this is probably the right one for you. So this or that, and this is another hard one to decide because I actually love both of these a lot, but there are about three different considerations that you need to think about if you're deciding between these two different creams. So the first one is skin type. And I think I've already answered this one for you because if you're a little bit more a combination, like you do have like a true 50, 50 skin, 50% 50 of it's oily, 50% of it's feeling a little bit dry. I do think that the um, blue label cream is going to be the right choice for you because this is a solidly medium, non-greasy, not overly rich cream. Now, if you suffer with more dryness, so I have combination skin, but I'm not 50-50 in the winter time. I'm more like all dry <laughs> with a little bit of oil. And so for me, that's when I'm going to reach for the black tea enriched cream. This is definitely focusing a lot more moisture, a lot more richness and emolliency into the skin. And it's going to target more dry skin than combination skin. The other thing that you want to think about is, you know, really the, the focus of these two particular products, they're very different. The Ado cream, this is definitely focused on sensitive skin, minimal formulations, soothing any type of irritation that you have on the skin. The black tea cream is definitely more focused on the well aging journey. People who want to focus on skin elasticity um, and firmness with a lot of moisture. And finally, price is actually going to be a big consideration here. The other products that I talked about all kind of exist in the same sort of price um, range of each other, but these two products are very, very different. The black tea cream has 60 milliliter of product for twice the price of the blue label cream, which contains twice the amount of product. There's 120 milliliter of product in here for half the price of the black tea cream. So there's like a huge difference here, right? Um, and that's gonna be a huge consideration when you're deciding which one is right for you. Please don't ask me to decide. <laughs> <laughs> this or that because it's really tough for me and I really just think it's up to you and what you're looking for and what fits your budget your skin type right and your skin concerns and that concludes episode 22 of this or that I can't believe we have so many episodes of this or that out already and you know I'm always planning the next one so let me know what you'd like to see in the next episode drop your battle suggestions in the comments below now if this video helps you you watched all the way through but you have not hit subscribe yet 
please, before you go, take a moment, hit subscribe because I am constantly releasing new quality skincare videos just like this one all throughout the week. And I also do shorts as well. So you might want to consider turning on notifications so you're never out of the loop and you're always getting new skincare content. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe wherever you are in the world. I'm so glad you were with me here today and I love you so much. I'll see you soon. Bye.